fun, is it? This is fun. It had all started in Tottenham, North London, where Mark Duggan was shot and killed by police because intelligence suggested he was carrying a gun. What began as a peaceful protest quickly turned into civil unrest. Crowds of people stormed their own communities. Looters helped themselves to everything and anything they could get their hands on. And in the first riots organised on social media, the police struggled to reclaim control. This is where I was standing when they, uh, when they burnt the place down. It was just over there. That's where the window was that was broken, where the first puff of smoke came out. Trevor Reeves runs one of the oldest family furniture shops in England. House of Reeves, good afternoon. During the riots, it took minutes to burn down and many years to rebuild. I had a phone conversation with my father who'd come back from his wedding anniversary. He'd got home, turned on the telly and there's his shop in flames in front of him on the telly. Um, I had a phone call from him and he was he was practically in tears. I uh, spoke to my brother who came, came down here and we both stood and looked at it. You just feel completely impotent and thinking, what do we do now? I was seeing crowds of people. I was seeing motorbikes screaming around on full revs. Um, there was windows being smashed and there was an awful lot of onlookers as well. So you watched it burn? Yeah, yes, I, I watched it for about half an hour. Um, and then I saw a whiff of smoke come out of one of the windows because it was on the opposite side uh, to where I was. And that's where um, the gentleman had leaned in and lit a, lit a sofa and the rest is on camera for everybody to see. The man who burned down the shop that used to be on this site was sentenced to 11 and a half years in prison. He was one of more than 3,000 people who were arrested over the course of the riots. And in the midst of huge public anger in the aftermath, many of them would end up behind bars. Vanel Delore was one of them. He was 18 and he decided to throw missiles into a crowd and accepts now that it was a big mistake. This right here is like where it happened, isn't it? Like Clarence Road. Um, this is where I threw, threw about got two or three bottles on this road right here and judge made an example of me and gave me a year for each bottle. Over here was where the real madness was going on. Like um, There was thousands of people on the street, people from all over Hackney on the street. Like, it was insane. The atmosphere was like, we need to send out a message. We need to be heard because silence is not working anymore. Talking is not working anymore. No, it's not like he wanted the police to get hurt, like, but it was, it was like, you lot need to listen. Someone needs to change. But Professor Tim Newburn, who studied the riot, says nothing was done by politicians to instigate change, and the lack of a public inquiry meant the causes couldn't be addressed. More generally, I think, a sense that they often felt that they were living in communities that were occupied communities by the, by the police and that that relationship was often one that was very hostile and difficult and dangerous. But then more generally I think it was a sense of um, impoverishment at times when they felt that this was not just an outcome of government policy often but sometimes was perceived as being a deliberate outcome of public policy. Did our politicians, local and national, put in place things to, to mitigate, to improve? By and large, no. No, we saw almost no response of any real substance to the riots, and that's pretty scandalous. But it's understandable why someone like Trevor has little sympathy for the rioters of 2011. I think they could get away with it. I think that was predominantly what, what it was. It's a fun night out. We can get away with whatever we fancy doing. Um, and that's really disappointing. You've got a very intelligent people getting swept up in stealing bottles of pop or whatever it is out of a window. But then you've got people who have got nothing, who see it as an opportunity to get something that they'll probably never be able to have. Um, and they're two so, such polar opposites. Vanell's actions 10 years ago have blighted his life ever since. 
He's been stripped of his leave to remain in this country and threatened with deportation, meaning he's not legally allowed to work. He's finally turned his life around and is volunteering. Looking back on it, I can understand that he wanted to make an example out of me, but you're putting me behind bars, someone that's never been jailed before, someone that's fresh out of school, and you're putting me on the wing with grown men, with grown criminals. I was still young and impressionable. I don't know how you thought that was the solution to the problem. Vanell sought his own solutions and now works with a charity to reduce the chances of youths reoffending. The spasm of violence and looting died away almost as quickly as it had started. Ten years on, some of the victims and the perpetrators are still counting the cost of one of the most violent inner city eruptions of modern times. Shaman Freeman Powell, Sky News.